Okay, this is the last uh, lesson about the letters in the Arabic alphabet. We've gone over most of them, and we just have seven left. Um, so I'm not going to review at the beginning of this video. Uh, if you get lost, you can go back to the other videos and we'll review the whole alphabet at the end. So the last of these letters uh, is calf. Um, this is the same as a K sound. It's not a cough, but just a K sound. So ka, ki, ku, all of that is calf. When you write it, in the beginning it looks like this. Uh, in the middle, it looks the same. And at the end, it looks like this. Now, this is a little symbol that you're going to learn later called a, ham uh, a hamza. And this is actually not a hamza. This is just a little squiggle that they put in the K. So this mark actually doesn't really mean anything. It's just part of the letter. So just keep that in mind. Um, the next letter, all the letters that we're actually learning in this lesson are actually really easy to pronounce, so it should be really quick. The next letter is lamb. And this makes an L sound. It actually looks like an L, but backwards. So that's at the beginning, it's in the middle, at the end. So la la la. And also, just for further notice, um, whenever you see al at the beginning of a word, this means the. And whenever you write a lem and then an alif, it actually looks different. It looks like this. So this is la. La. This actually means no. In Arabic, you'll hear it all the time. Yes. If you want to say yes, it's uh, naam. I knew how to say no in Arabic way before I learned how to say yes. So this is uh, naam. So just for further notice. Um, the next two letters. Is the meme. Looks like this. When you write it, the beginning it looks like this, the middle goes under, at the end it goes like that. The meme is never above the line. If it was above the line, it would look too much like a fa. So just put it below or in the middle, and you should be good. So this is ma, ma, ma. Um, an example of a word is uh, um, um, this means mother. Uh, the next letter is noon. So this letter is, you remember the ba, ta, and tha? It's actually the same when it's written at the beginning and in the middle. But it just has the one dot above. Remember the ta had two dots? This one just has one. And then at the end, if it's at the end, it's going to be a bit rounder. It's not going to be flat like the ba, ta, and tha. So this would be na, na, na. Um, oh, an example of a word would be nahnu. This means, let's see, this means we in Arabic. Uh, let's see the next layer. So, so far today, we've done calf, lamb, mean, and noon. The next letter is the ha, huh, and it's just like this. This is a normal H, and it goes on the end of words a lot. Um, feminine words usually have this. The ha huh is not like the ha. Huh. Remember the ha? Huh? 
and you write it with a 7. This is just a normal H in English. The ha is the one that you need to be worried about. The ha is totally easy to pronounce. When you write it, this is it at the beginning, this is it in the middle, and this is it at the end. Sometimes, in the middle, people will write it like that. So it'll look like that instead. Um, when people, uh, when Arabic people laugh on Facebook, they'll write like this. Uh, um, so you'll see this thing a lot when they're laughing, ha 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 ha, and it'll just go on forever. Um, so that's a, a pretty easy letter to pronounce. All of these are pretty easy that we're going to learn today. Um, and at the end, it goes up like this. And this is um, seen in the word Allah. If you write Allah, it's really common in Arabic. Alif, Lam, Lam, Ha. So you might see this mark above. You'll learn that later. This is like an A, an L, an L, and an H. So. <clears throat> You'll actually see this is a very common, the other really common thing uh, you'll see, you know all the letters now, is uh, um, Muhammad. This is also, you'll see these together all the time in uh, calligraphy. This is like an M, this is the meme, this is the Ha, this is another meme, and this is the Dad. So Muhammad. Uh, so if you wanted to write Muhammad Ali, uh, it would be this. Let's see. Okay, so the next letter is another letter that doesn't connect. Um, and this is the wow. Wow. It is a W sound or an O sound. So it's O or W. Um, it just depends on where it is in the word. If it basically, if the letter before it has this mark, then it's going to make it longer. So this is like a little U. And if the little U is there, this is going to make it a longer U. So this would be like O. Um, but if it's just by itself, W. You see this a lot, especially when you're reading Quran. This uh, just means and, usually. Sometimes it means like you're school, just swearing a an oath, uh, like Wallahi. People say that a lot. Uh, Wallahi means uh, by God, like I swear, by God. Um, the final letter of the Arabic alphabet, and we're going to do one kind of letter after this, uh, is the Ya. Yeah. Um, now these are the two vowels. So there's three vowels in Arabic. There's the alif, let's see, the alif, the wow, and the ya. These are the three vowels in Arabic. Um, I'll probably cover them more in another session. Uh, the ya is written just like the ba ta tha, uh, but at the end it's like this. It's all curvy. And sometimes if it's at the end of the word, so if you see this shape, um, sometimes people won't leave the dots because it's obvious it's a yeah because it doesn't look like anything else. But if it's in the middle of a word or at the beginning, you're going to see the two dots that signify the yeah. And this is just like a Y, so this would be yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, an example would be just the word yeah, which means like, hey, you, oh, you, um, like, yeah, Allah. You can say, Ya Allah, like, Wallahi. Ya Allah means, oh Allah, uh, oh God, you know, and then you ask for something after that. <clears throat> so, let's go over all the letters that we've learned. There might be alphabet songs on YouTube that you might want to look at. I don't know any, um, but that might be useful. Um, the problem is sometimes they sing it out of order, or they have a different order for the alphabet.
So alif ba ta tha jim ha kha dal dal ra ze sin shin صاد ضاد ط ض and then our favorite عين غين ف قاف كاف Lam, Mim, Noon, Ha, Wow, and Yeah. That is the Arabic alphabet. So if you know all these by heart, reading will, be, will come really easily. I actually never learned I didn't learn how to connect the letters until way after I had actually learned the alphabet. Go back in these videos and review how to connect the actual letters. Um, that's why I did it on each letter so you can see. Um, so when you're reading, you can actually know at the end of the word that that's an I, not a ha. Um, there's one other thing I'd like to go over before this lesson is over. Um, there's one more letter that's kind of a letter, but it's kind of not a letter. Um, this is called the Hamza. And it's a mix between a vowel mark and an actual letter. So the Hamza by itself is something called a glottal stop. So to put this in an English perspective, um, if a British person were to say the word Helen, uh, Maybe not Helen. Let's see Carter. Um, they'd say Ka'a. So in Arabic, if you were to write this with Arabic letters, they would just put a Hamza in the middle there because they don't pronounce the R T. They just say Ka'a. So the glottal stop just signifies when you stop all the sound coming out of your mouth for just a moment and then you keep going. Um, so in Texas we say there's a city called Canton but we say Canton so we don't even pay attention to this middle part and it's like we're just putting a Hamza there so Canton so this goes um, this is pretty common especially in older Arabic and um, but now sometimes it's not pronounced like for example the word lo, lo in Arabic has the Hamza there on the wow and this means pearl but in modern Arabic they'll just say lulu so there is a bit of they don't always say it um, you might have heard the word uh, mu'min believer that is the same thing so the ya yeah is a letter by itself it can sit on a wow or a ya yeah, and it basically um, tells the alif what to do. So if the alif is at the beginning of a word and it has an, uh, a hamza above it, um, that means it basically starts the sound of the word. Um, so if you write the word ahad, um, the alif would be nothing here without the hamza. So the hamza is really important that it's there. Um, the alif by itself, the only time it doesn't have the hamza is if it elongates an A sound. So I'll go over this in a future video. Um, but remember the word bab in the first video? This means door. Um, it just makes the A sound longer. So this would be bab. And if you just had two bas together, and you just had the little mark right there, it'd just be bab. So bab and bab. 
So it makes the sound a lot longer. If the Hamza is at the beginning of a word, it's going to signify the beginning of sound. It just starts all the sound from your lungs. Uh, it just basically is an empty vowel. Um, so later when you learn the marks for the vowel marks, uh, Hamza can actually indicate, make an alif, uh, make it do an oo sound. And also if you put it at the bottom and you put this little mark, it makes an e sound. Uh, we'll all cover this later in future videos. I just wanted you to know that the Hamza is considered a letter when you start looking at roots in Arabic. Um, so it is important to know and you'll actually learn how to pronounce it pretty intuitively. It's not as complicated as you think. Sometimes writing it can get, can get confusing, um, but leaving it out, most people will know what you mean. Okay, that concludes this episode um, for learning Arabic. You've now covered the entire alphabet and the next um, lessons will cover the vowel marks and we'll start putting words together and pronouncing the words and just put some basic common vocabulary in there so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on when you're reading. Um, thank you very much.